The land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of Scugog, Hiawatha, and Alderville First Nations, and the Métis Nation. This territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. The treaties that were signed for this particular parcel of land are collectively referred to as the Williams Treaties of 1923. We recognize and deeply respect their historic connection to this place. We also recognize the contributions that indigenous peoples have made, both in shaping and strengthening this city in particular and our province and country as a whole. Good morning and welcome to all of you both here and watching online. It is a joy to welcome you for this second Sunday of Advent. A reminder that our COVID protocols remain in effect. The science people will begin the Eucharist at the back of the sanctuary, they'll guide you up to where this blue line is. I'll say the body of Christ, you'll say amen, you'll come to where this cross is, receive the sacrament on either side, there are X's, where you can remove your mask and consume of the host. Let's take a moment as we prepare ourselves to light our Advent candle. Let us pray. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Of old you spoke by the mouth of your prophets, but in our days you speak through your Son, whom you have appointed the heir of all things. Grant us, your people, to walk in his light, that we may be found ready and watching when he comes again in glory, for you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever and ever, amen. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn. Dear friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your servant John the Baptist to prepare your people to welcome the Messiah, inspire us, the ministers and stewards of your truth, to turn our disobedient hearts to you, that when the Christ shall come again to be our judge, we may stand with confidence before his glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It was about 18 years ago that I made the first of three trips to the Holy Land. The first one would be the most extensive. I had the opportunity to spend five weeks there, of which the first two weeks would be wandering around the Sinai wilderness. And on about the second or third day, we came to a place known as the Wadi Farun. Now the word Wadi means a river valley, and very often they're quite dry. But how we got to the Wadi Farun was really quite exciting. We hiked for about an hour and a half across the sands and the rock, approaching a rather formidable cliff face, sort of blocking the way. But there was a little crack through it, and it was about 10 meters long. And when we got to the other side, suddenly we're standing at the top of this rather precipitous drop down into the Wadi Farun. And in the distance, you could see some palm trees indicating that there was water, an oasis. And also, I noticed that there was a pathway that was sort of crisscrossing, coming up from the valley towards where I was standing. And as we watched, there was a young Bedouin boy. He was bringing three camels up the path. And every now and then, he would stop, and he would either kick something aside with his foot, like a rock, or if it was bigger, he would bend down and pick it up and push it to the side. And my guide said, you know when Isaiah said, make straight the highways in the desert? North Americans think that's like making a straightaway for a race car track. It isn't. It means to go straighten up your room, clean up the mess, remove that which can cause you to trip. So as I watched this Bedouin bring the camels up, he was busy straightening the pathway so that he and or the animals would not lose their footing as they were going up. That's when I began to realize that this journey was going to teach me an awful lot. And indeed, the word wilderness in Hebrew does not mean a vast expanse of nothing. It means what's out there. So for a Jewish person in that day and age to go into the wilderness, you went in fully expecting to be encountered and to encounter something. And that was my first encounter, finally understanding what the prophet Isaiah was really speaking about. Remove that which can cause you to stumble. You know, I think there's an awful lot in our day and age that makes us feel like we're in a wilderness. I mean, the world is very different. I don't know about you, but I am ready for this pandemic to end. And just when I was hoping we were getting close, all along comes another piece of it. This wilderness seems to be going on and on and on. But today's gospel reading, I think, is very topical for us. Did you notice how it began? Luke begins by painting us the history. Tiberius was the emperor. Pontius Pilate was a governor. We had Herod and Philip, sort of rulers in various regions. Then we even went into the religious cycle of Annas and Caiaphas, the high priest. In other words, Luke is saying, you know, nine times out of ten, most people, if they're going to look for help, look to high places. They look to people in power, in authority. But that's not how God works. Because then Luke goes on, but the word of God came to John in the wilderness. 
You see, so often in our day and age when things go off the rails and we begin to wrestle with things, we tend to look in the high places, the elected places, the places where we think people have authority, where God might be. But we would be wrong. God is the kind of God that likes to play in left field or right field, or even better yet, the outfield. He likes to play in the places that we least expect. Because you see, when we're in a wilderness, when we're away from all of the things that clutter our lives, that grab our attentions, when we're away from all of that kind of stuff, then there's the possibility that God can encounter us, and more importantly, that we can encounter God. I've always found that God comes in the quiet, in the solitude, in the places when I'm removed from so much of the distractions that become very much part of my life and that I do cherish, but they can get in the way. They can be stumbling blocks. And to hear Isaiah's great words, to make straight the paths in the wilderness can be a very powerful, powerful thing. Think for a moment of all the stumbling blocks that we have as individuals, of all the things that gather our attention, of all the things that we seem to invest so much time and energy into. But then also think of all the things that can be stumbling blocks for the institution that you and I love dearly, the church, as the church itself is in a wilderness, as the church itself is trying to ascertain where might God be leading us? Where are we encountering God? And what is the direction that God is now taking us on? One of the second things that I learned when I was gathering energy and hiking through the wilderness is that when you encounter a person coming toward you, you always stop, you always talk, and you always share information because they have knowledge of where you're going, because they're coming from there, and you have knowledge of where they're going, because you're coming from behind you. So it became very important to be hospitable, to not run away from the stranger, to not see them as a threat, but to see them as a source of hope and dream and direction. And that happens when you're in the wilderness. I think one of the biggest stumbling blocks facing our society today is that we're becoming increasingly inhospitable. We're becoming increasingly antisocial. We're becoming more and more insular. And in doing so, we're losing sight of some of the tremendous gifts that God could be giving us, gifts that be coming to us from strangers, hiking on a path to where we are going. Some early part of the 6th century BCE, there was a prophet named Baruch. Now, you won't find Baruch in your Bible unless you have a Bible that has an apocrypha. An apocrypha is a collection of books that were good, but not quite good enough. So they just didn't get into the official canon. But Baruch is one of these very interesting characters. Baruch was a contemporary. Indeed, he was a friend of the great prophet Jeremiah. Baruch and Jeremiah lived at a time when things were getting pretty horrible in their land. Jeremiah was well aware that a nation that was bordering them, a nation known as Babylon, was gaining strength. And Babylon was beginning to start to look westward, realizing that that land, those two kingdoms of Israel, the northern and the southern, the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of Judah, could become valuable property. And so Jeremiah was speaking to the people, saying, if we don't change our ways, if we don't change what we're thinking and doing, trouble will befall us. It was Baruch, though, who added a very powerful line. You probably didn't hear it because we tend not to listen. But Baruch said, would you cast off your robe of sorrow and put on the glory that God is giving you? Did you hear it? Cast off the sorrows that are ours and accept the gifts that God is giving. Now Baruch and Jeremiah were talking to the city of Jerusalem, but they could be talking to individuals just as well. It's a powerful image. How many things do we wear that wear us down? How many times do we become sorrowful and we're not aware that we could jettison that sorrow 
if we would simply reach out and accept a gift that God is giving. And then that takes me back to that crazy man crying out in the wilderness down by the River Jordan. John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. You know his message. We've heard it hundreds of times, right? Repent. But does it mean just simply to turn around? Does it simply mean to change your ways? Or is there something more profound? Does it mean to turn your back on yourself and start to reach out to the greater self, the self that's beyond you, the self of God, who is offering you gifts that you can't see because you're so blinded by your own needs, your own robes? John is saying, repent. It's not just actions, it's a way of thinking, John is saying. John is calling out to the people. It is incredibly important for us to change the way we think, change the way we see things. But it's that word change because it doesn't give us any sort of concrete thing. Listen to Baruch again. If we throw off that robe of sorrow and accept God, then Baruch goes on to say, you get new things. You get glory. You get righteousness. You get a hope. You get a dream. You get so much that can enrich your living that your life will be forever changed. It is the season of Advent. Two candles burn this day. Light coming back into the darkness. But it is in the wilderness that the darkness is the darkest, though a single candle can illuminate it. Hear the prophet's call. Come into the wilderness knowing I will be encountered as I encounter. Amen. Please stand with me as you are comfortable so that we can see the words of the Apostles' Creed together. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray.
try again. Sorry for the delay. Together in God's presence, we offer our prayer saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the Anglican Church of Burundi, for Linda Nichols and the staff of the Primate's Office of the Anglican Church of Canada. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Project Plowshare, the Peace Institute of the Canadian Council of Churches, and the, in the diocesan social justice and advocacy cycle of prayer, for all St. Peterborough, all St. Sherman Street, and all Saints Whitby. In the Oshawa Deanery, we pray for the parish of St. Matthew. We pray for Linda, our primate, Mark, our national indigenous bishop, Anne, our metropolitan, Andrew, our diocesan bishop, and Rusilla, our area bishop. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for peace in this troubled world, especially in the Middle East and wherever there is conflict. For all who are affected by COVID-19, especially hospital and frontline workers, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the residents of British Columbia who are affected by flooding and for Canada's First Nations and the truth and reconciliation process. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our local community, for the homeless, the hungry, and those who struggle with loneliness and depression. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our parish of St. Martin's, for Shelley, our minister, as we celebrate her induction as our incumbent this afternoon. For the ministry of this parish, our wardens, Michelle, Brent, Erna, and Eugene, and our youth and youth leader, Moya. We pray for Leonie, Helen, Christina, Adam, Olivia, Paisley, Gloria, Angel, and on their birthday, Kate and Marjorie. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, bless those in need, especially Larice, Dominic, Ross, Wilf, and Aidan, and for those we carry in our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. On the anniversary of their death, we pray for George Borner, Derek Zabitz, Marlo Donnell, Michelle Spiro, and Dorothy Power. Lord, hear our prayer. All our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
And Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everybody. Let us pray. God, our strength, we are nothing without you. Receive all we offer you this day as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. We give you thanks and praise, almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God, and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who placed their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it 
in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And those wishing to do so may make their spiritual communion by joining in this prayer with me now. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Faithful God, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. Help us always to hear the prophet's call to turn our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with you and the ones you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Good morning, and a thank you to our amazing crew putting on the bazaar yesterday. It was a very successful day. The parish raised $3,571, and I think thank those who worked on it. There are um, a number of items uh, which are seasonally appropriate um, that did not sell yesterday, but they are available on the back table, and uh, Denise and Lee will be there if you wish to uh, purchase any of those items following the service. It's been a long time coming, but today at 4 o'clock, we're actually going to welcome Shelley Pollard, the <laughs> Reverend Shelley Pollard. March of, yes. March of 2020, right? And here we are. So at 4 o'clock today, there will be the uh, celebration of new ministry for Reverend Shelley. Um, some, of, some people may have been a little um, hesitant to try and sign up, anticipating that this was going to be a really large event. Um, COVID being what it has been, it, it's, it, the registration is, is not full. So if anyone uh, would like to come, they haven't signed, uh, didn't register through Eventbrite, feel free to come. There will be definitely room for walk-ins. And also, we will be live streaming it on the St. Martin's YouTube channel. So if you can't get here, you could watch it at home. Advent Word, uh, the bookmarks, uh, I believe, are available, although I'm not sure where they are. I'm sure Denise will know. If you would like to pick up one of those uh, to uh, give you some ideas for meditations during this uh, holy season. Uh, Compline, uh, evening service on Tuesday coming up. Uh, if you want the Zoom links, they're on the blue sheet. You can pick up on the way out. Uh, Christmas wish tree. Some of you will have noticed uh, the Christmas tree at the back of the church. That's not the Christmas tree that will be here, here in about a week and a half, week's time. Um, but that tree is the Christmas wish tree. Um, St. Martin's has teamed up with Dara's Gifts from the Heart to, to give a, a better Christmas to some a particular family that has been adopted for this purpose, as well as some individuals. Um, the, the way this works is you have a look at the tree, you select a tag, and the tag will have on it something like son, daughter, mother, and a place where you can purchase. For example, I looked at one, it says EB Games $25 gift card. So if that's something that you feel you would like to uh, donate, to that cause, by all means, take the tag off, write your name on the sheet that's on the table beside the tree, and then bring that gift back next week, I believe. With it, within two weeks, yeah. Okay. Um, those of you who do not have name tags on, I would ask you to please wear them in the future. 
uh, a number of reasons. Um, we have a new minister um, <laughs> who hasn't met everyone. And, and, and we have a, uh, sometimes we have a, a, a greeter or a sites person who may not be familiar with all the faces. And so it's helpful if uh, he or she would be able to see your name as you walk in. Um, there are a few church calendars left uh, and they are uh, available on the back table. And I think I've covered everything, so let us move to our closing hymn. Thank you. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.